Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next edition. I'm super excited because I have one of the most amazing people in finance. Um, he's an expert in his own right, and that's none other than Robert Farrington. So, hey, Robert. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited. And so um, just for everybody that's watching, I met Robert three years ago um, at FinCon in Dallas. So, and I've been obsessed and following him ever since. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I remember that. I was just like walking aimlessly and you're like, come sit down with us. I'm like, okay, let's do this. That's right. <laughs> and Robert, I learned so much. I remember, I forget what session your title it was, when we were talking about building a community like on your website in the forum. Um, you were giving some tips on that and I'm still gleaning and I'm still using those tips. So thank you for that too. <laughs> you're welcome. Definitely. Yeah, so I'm going to just read Robert's short bio. So Robert Farrington is the founder of The College Investor, and he has been helping people navigate college and escape student loan debt for a decade. Wow, it's been 10 years. It's been 10 years. Crazy. I know. That is so awesome, though, the longevity, and that speaks to the value you know that you're bringing to the community. So I think that is awesome. So, Robert, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to let you go at it. But, of course, we're in the pandemic. This is the year that has changed everything. And so how has the pandemic um, impacted college admissions and finance and finance in college so far? Yeah, I mean, there's so many changes across the board. You know, some are good. Some are more challenging for families. I think one of the biggest is a lot of people are questioning the value of going across country and staying in a college dorm only to be locked down and paying, you know, an extra $25,000 for room and board when they deliver you some food and you can't do anything except do your Zoom classes away from home. So, you know, I think that's really the biggest change this year is, is it worth it to go to a school or not? And people are challenging that ROI, which I've been a huge proponent of ROI, return on investment for years now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the message is starting to sink in. You know, college isn't just about the education. Uh, you know, you can get educated anywhere. You can watch the smartest Cornell and Harvard professors deliver their lectures online for free. We're not mm -hmm. going to college for, you know, the knowledge and education. That's a small part of it. I mean, honestly, it's a social signal to a future employer when you graduate, and that's why you're doing it. And so between more people taking gap years than ever before, more people looking at community college than ever before, I think that people are finally starting to understand that, you know, going straight from high school to a four-year college isn't for everybody. Finally, some of this psychology is breaking in America where parents aren't like forcing it down kids' throats. Some are, but a lot of them aren't. And as a result, I think people are looking at more creative ways to pay. Uh, if you're going to take English 101, why not just go to your local community college, take your English 101 Zoom class online, do that for two years, let this pandemic hopefully fade away a little bit and then transfer to a, a, another state school or another college. And you could save a lot of money. You could still be making educational progress. And it's not the traditional path that a lot of people have done. And some people have done it, but I'm mm -hmm. excited for those changes. And uh, it's a struggle, though. It really is for a lot of families. And, you know, I, you've touched on so much, but I'm so glad that you said in the beginning of your answer that college is more than just the academic piece. It's it's more than that. And, you know, I was excited, too. Um, I was just talking. I was on a panel a couple of days ago. It was a uh, University of Maryland. And they were saying they're seeing for the first time um, the local community colleges around them are full. Their classes were full and they couldn't get anybody else in. So. 100 percent. And that's what we're seeing here, too. Uh, you know, my sister in law works admissions at our local state school. And the interesting thing is, is their local enrollment is way up, but their out of state is way down. Yeah. And as a university, they're freaking out. But for me, as someone that's like, yeah, champion people being smart about their money. I'm like, good. Don't. <laughs> don't that's don't right. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> we love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Because, you know, yeah. the, if you guys don't know, it's the, the schools make their money on these out of state students. So, <laughs> oh, yes. And international, too. I know that's been impacted as well. Significantly, which is fine, though. You know, you can still go to college, but now you're everyone's thinking a little bit more this year, yeah. which it's it's good. 
It is, and and I'm glad to to do that, uh, to know that, and to see that. And so now, my next question is, you know, for the students and families that are watching now, you know, and and let's say they're somewhere in that preparation, you know, phase for going to school. You know, how do they prepare with this uncertainty um, with getting into college and paying for it for the coming months and possibly years? You know, what are some tips maybe you can give to help them kind of get ready? Well, you know, let's be honest here. Uh, you know, even if people are shunning away from traditional college, it's not going away for everybody. You know, like we're still going to have college for years to come and you still need to save for it. Even if a new president comes in and maybe does some type of free tuition or, you know, lowers the cost of education, there's still going to be expenses. So for anyone thinking about college in the future or you're, you're a, a family and you have younger kids and you want to save for them, still do it. Like you should save for college. You should plan on saving for college. Um, if you're getting close to college, you should still be applying for scholarships in high school to try to offset the cost of college. You can't go wrong in doing any of those things. Now, there are some things that might come in the future. I mean, we I can't I don't have a crystal ball, but you know, we're recording this on election day, believe it or not. Like election. you know, <laughs> it's election day. Go vote. But you know, uh, if a new yes. president comes in, there is talks about you know making college free for certain people. There is talks about you know some type of student loan forgiveness uh, program. I, I don't necessarily see some of that come to fruition, and especially not like literally right away. Uh, you know, big things like that take time. So you should still be planning on paying for things and saving for things as best as you can. And and if you need to take student loans. You know, you got to take them out, but just be mindful of what you borrow to pay for school, um, knowing everything we know now about how the economy is looking. I agree. You know what? I want to bring up something because for everybody that doesn't know, Robert is in Cali. So he's in California. And so, Robert, I know out there, um, you know, there are possibly some theater majors watching, some music majors, you know, the arts um community i'll say and they're probably freaking out right now because you know there's not a lot of production going on and different things like that so what advice do you have for those families do you tell your kid you can't major in that anymore how do they pivot in such a way where they're not taking on extra debt but they can get into a career that they want and, and, you know, not at all. I'm a big believer. Everyone should go into whatever they want to do. But we live in a day and age where you can see the data. You can know what career fields make. You can find paths to your career. If you want to go into the arts, you want to go into theater, you want to go into, I don't know, curating a museum. I, there's so many jobs out there. Like every time I talk to someone, I'm awakened by something new. But, mm -hmm. you know, like you can do those things. But think about what you're going to earn. And my rule of thumb for everybody is never borrow more than you think you're gonna earn in your first year after graduation. That's you know, good. it doesn't it doesn't hold true for everyone, but it's a good rule of thumb, right? Like if you're gonna go and be a teacher, you know, you can Google it. And in your state, you're gonna make forty thousand dollars a year. Okay. Well, don't borrow more than that to pay for college. And then maybe if you want to go be a computer science major, you're going to make $65,000 a year after you graduate. That's cool. Don't borrow more than that higher level. And the reason I like to say this is because, you know, you can go do anything you want to do, but if you borrow way too much, you're going to hate your life after you graduate. Even if you're doing a career you love, if you're trying to service a debt that's just enormous, you're going to be so frustrated and you're going to hate your college like that you even did this. You're going to hate the career you're in. You're going to you're just going to be miserable. So it's like, don't do that to yourself. You know, go to community college, transfer to your local state school, maybe take a gap year and go intern at the career you think you want to do. See if you even like it because, you know, I, you probably know the stat more than I do, but it's like something like only like 20 or 30 percent of people even stick to a career in their major anyways. Oh, yeah. Like, Go try things like now's the time. I, I know there's a lot of peer pressure and parental pressure and community pressure to go do certain things, but I promise you that they're also judging you when you're 30. And you know, if you're doing successful things and enjoying life, like they'll also be like, wow, how'd they do that? You right. know, and they won't they won't remember all these like years earlier on, right? It's it's crazy mm -hmm. how that works. And you know, yes, it is. And you know what? I love what you said a second ago is to go do the research. And I, I encourage, like Robert just said, the family can come together. That'd be a great little personal finance project is come together and do the research. Cause Robert, I think some of our, you know, young people, I think they may overestimate sometimes what you can make <laughs> at certain well, well, jobs. 
Or they underestimate because the other thing is, is a lot of people just don't know what they're not exposed to. Right. And so when I went to high school, they just ended auto shop. They just ended wood shop and they rolled out computer labs to the whole school. Right. And so this was 25 years ago. I don't know. I don't want to age myself here, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, they eliminated yeah. all these trade jobs. And so when you went to high school, like the only thing you got exposed to is technology. And when you yeah. look on the news, like you know, Jeff Bezos is this, uh, you know, you're only seeing technology. Elon Musk is doing this. And you might not be exposed to the fact that, you know, that uh, electric company worker that's up on his, you know, his lift, you know, he could be making mm -hmm. $150,000 a year doing that. But if you don't right. have an electrician in your family that, that you can look to, you might not realize yeah. that's a viable path. Right. And so I think the other thing is just get exposure to things out there. Realize that, you know, there's a lot of high six figure paying jobs out there that don't require a college degree or maybe they require something else like vocational school, trade school, something like that. But a yeah. lot of those kind of jobs also will pay for that for you <laughs> versus right. a four year university. Right. So, you know, realize there's a lot of options. So try to get exposed to things like I thought I wanted to be a doctor uh, when I was in high school. Me too. <laughs> right. So my dad and mom luckily were like, go be a candy striper at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And they made me go volunteer as a candy striper. And mm -hmm. I hate I hated it. I hated oh, being okay. in the I hated being in the hospital. I hated being around like sick people. It just was not my thing. And no, no offense to them, but I'm like, I am so glad I did this. Like I'm very thankful for the experience. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a doctor. Like I do not want to work in this environment. Like I just don't like it. And, you know, I could have gone down a path of taking out $200,000 in student loans to oh, yeah. learn. I didn't want to be a doctor and that would have been horrible. So like, go get experiences, go try things, intern, get a job, you know, take a gap year. This is the year to do it. Like, go try things mm -hmm. out and see, because you'll be shocked. I mean, it's so hard to make a life-changing decision when you're 17, 18 years old. Like, it's hard to make a life-changing decision when you're older. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> You are so right about that, Robert. And, and you're right. I, you just have to try things out and, and, you know, test things out. And so speaking of utilizing your resources, and I encourage everyone to go over to the collegeinvestor.com. And, and of course, I'll have uh, the links and everything to, to get you there. But Robert, just kind of talk about for those of us that haven't uh, graced your website yet and made a visit, um, how can students and families utilize your website in order to stay proactive instead of being reactive, especially during this challenging time we're in? Yeah, so you can come to the College Investor and we have a ton of resources on how to save for college and how to pay for college. It's important to think about those and where you are in your life, right? You got younger kids, you're in the saving for college mode. And man, anyone that's done it, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of things, 529 plans, Roth IRAs, how to get scholarships, how to get all that kind of stuff. Like there's a lot there. And then you got to figure out how to pay for college effectively as well. You know, by the time you get to 16, 17, 18, you got to shift your mindset into it. And we have a ton of resources on how to do that effectively as well, how to lower the cost, how to offset it so you don't have to borrow. And, and of course, all the different ways to, to borrow for college as smartly as you possibly can if you know it, it's something that you're going to have to do. Right. And the key word is smartly. You don't want to <laughs> borrow... Unnecessary. Don't borrow too much. Don't borrow too much. You know, like that is why people are frustrated today. You know, yes. the student loan debt crisis is a crisis because people borrowed a lot and they're not seeing the ROI on what they borrowed. And there's a lot of factors to that. Yes, it could be individual choice, but it's also economic choice. Wage growth has stagnated. People didn't go into the careers. They for-profit universities promise something, financial literacy education. There's a lot that goes into it. We can pick one of many different problems, but it all comes down to people borrow too much. So don't borrow too much. Yes, I agree. And I just want to say this too, for the parents, even though you're maybe have finished your college journey, I encourage you to also look at the college investor as well. And Robert, I love, um, I guess as you or your team, I love the comparison articles. So when I'm looking at different apps and different, you know, checking accounts and things like that, credit cards, um, I love it. I'm able to see everything. And of course, you know, weigh the pros and cons. So 
that's something that I love as well on Robert's website. But Robert, I guess we'll end with this. I'll let you have the final words. You know, tell us what's coming up next for you. What can we expect through College Investor or the Robert Farrington brand, I guess? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you nailed it. We're just doing more of the same, but it, it was scary enough to think about it. it's almost tax season already. Yeah. And I think it's going to start earlier than ever. Sadly, we're in this pandemic. I think a lot of people are going to be looking for their refunds as fast as they can. Um, and so we do a lot of reviews and comparisons on tax software, how to file your taxes for free, how to get it early. And heaven forbid, please don't get a tax refund loan. But you know, people do uh, learn what you're getting into before you take advantage of these products. But it's just, I know a lot of people are out there, they're hurting, and they're struggling. And so I think, um, it's going to be a big thing come December, believe it or not, is when most people start thinking about this. And they get their final paycheck, get their final, t you know, even before their W-2 comes and they're trying to rush in and, and get money for it. So I agree. So for those of you that are doing that or that's your plan, make sure you stay tuned also to the collegeinvestor.com. So Robert, with that being said, I have had fun. Um, you share amazing stuff as usual. So thank you so much. And we're definitely going to do this again. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks for having me. I'd be happy to come back anytime. This is fun. Awesome. Awesome.